This is my Zaylot Hardcore Iron Man, and I've just spent 80 hours at RuneScape's worst minigame. Why you ask? Because this dumb brown ball is the key to breaking the Herblor skill wide open. Previously on my Zaya Locked Hardcore Iron Man, we achieved 60 agility at a level 5 cause, caught bats and worms for money, and this all led to us eventually smithing a steel axe in order to prepare for winter time. But there's one more thing we're missing, one more key to blow the door wide open on our progression towards the Colosseum. Locked behind the hard tier of the farming guild, requiring 85 farming to reach, this one fruit tree patch holds the key to unlocking the full potential of our herbal training. So, I've discussed the issues with herbal training in the past videos, namely the fact that I only have two herb patches available to me in the entire region, which pretty much means that growing herbs to train herbal is insanely slow. But what if I told you that there was something else I could farm that has potential to equal a third herb patch? Yeah, it's coconuts. So, what is so special about them, I hear you ask? Well, they are the ingredient of one of the only potions that does not require any herbs. Yeah, you heard me right. So, if I use a coconut's milk alongside a cactus spine and a red spider egg, both of which I can pretty easily obtain through cactus runs and temple spiders or serachnus. I can make a weapon poison plus requiring 73 herb law or, you know, 69 if I use a botanical pipe. This pretty much means that with each coconut I farm, I gain essentially 193 herb law XP and they grow every 45 minutes, which adds up to being pretty much the equivalent of getting two irrits every hour or so. And yeah, while that doesn't seem like much, it's so much more when you consider the fact that I farm about 8 or 9 irrit leaves per herb run, which is about every 90 minutes. So pretty much what this means is that if I start doing coconut runs early, herb lore might not actually be an issue ever during the account. I mean, sure it needs 73 herb lore, but if I'm getting super combats anyway, I'll need to get to at least 86, so I'll get the level. But yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, even though uh, palm tree is 68 farming, the annoying thing is that I do need 85 or, you know, 82 of the boost to enter the farming guild's hard tier to actually plant it. But I mean, if I was going for the herb patch anyway, the second herb patch, which I'm doing because that would be stupid not to, then I'm going to need to get 65 farming anyway. So, you know, I might as well just bump it up to 85. And obviously I get access to farming contracts too, which is absolutely huge for getting seeds on the account. So it's honestly, I feel like it's the uh, most natural progression I could do. And it is definitely something I want to get done early. And yeah, this is the entire reason I've been farming so diligently. It's all to get myself to tithe farm so I can manually train farming. So yeah, with that being said, my goal has now become to achieve 82 farming on the account. And mark my words, I will definitely be farming coconuts by the end of this video. Good morning, I hope everyone is doing fantastic. As you can see, I am not farming and that's because the goal from last episode hasn't really changed in the fact that my farming levels are still going to be pretty passive up until level 34. You know, plus or minus 10k XP from Garden of Death. But yeah, that means that we still do need something to sort of level up and do on the side while we wait for our crops to grow. So that I have decided is going to be woodcutting and fire making. Kind of an obvious choice considering we have Winter Todd next, so yeah, I thought I'd get that out of the way so we're ready to head straight to Winter Todd whenever we need. We've got the Steel Axe, we've got the Agility level for the shortcut, etc. So yeah, all we need is the Fire Making level. So hopefully the two levels coincide, so hopefully I get 34 farming around the time I get 50 Fire Making, but most likely I'll probably just stay until 50 anyway, so you know, I'm just ready to continue straight on to Winter Todd after this grind's over. But yeah, this is always a slow process, but you know, once farming becomes manual, when I have tithe farm, it'll be a lot, lot faster. So, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. I must say, this spot right outside of Hesidius Bank for Oak Trees is so nice. It gives me huge Draenor village vibes because I always, always on my Iron Man will cut my oak logs there. And 
if you know, you know the one oak tree outside of Drain or Bank. Yeah, that's where I live pretty much. So this is uh, this is some nice nostalgia. Anyway, there is 30 wood cutting. So I retract what I said earlier, thinking that I would have gotten 50 fire making before getting the farming level or at the same time <laughs> for a tithe farm. There is 10.2k farming XP, which means with the Garden of Death, I can actually get to 34 farming. So for now, farming is pretty much done. I'm going to keep doing a little bit of allotments because, you know, why not? While I finish up 50 fire making. But yeah, that is completely done and I can get onto talking about the uh, one of the big roadblocks in my way, which is now a Garden of Death. So, Garden of Death. <laughs> this quest is amazing because it gives 10k farming XP only on Zaya as well so I can do it and it's a I think it's a 20 farm requirement so not even that steep so this is pretty much going to double my uh my efficiency and get to level 34 I can get to 34 if I do this quest now what is the problem with doing this quest and why am I so terrified of it well for the most part you're running around going into holes deciphering some weird tablets but there is one section of the quest right at the end where you have to go into i think it's the mulch swamp or something like that and there is an unavoidable couple of lizardmen that you have to run past and being 10 hp and not wanting to get any higher hp because of winter todd i calculated it and even if i get one hp level i will get absolutely slapped by winter todd it literally will do double damage to me so that is not an option these lizardmen yeah they max hit a nine with range they max it at level of melee, which is completely out of the question, but ideally I'd be able to dodge that. But yeah, they can pretty much kill me instantly because that hit also has a chance to poison. And I'm not sure how poison works, but if poison can tick the instant the damage hits you, then I can just get stacked out and die instantly. And I can do nothing about it because it's unavoidable. What I'm planning is once I get to these lizardmen, I will have three alt accounts to tank them. So I will not get attacked by them. This is one of the few times I'll ever use alts and there is going to be a big discussion in terms of the use of alt accounts and things like that coming up when I actually get to the grinds that are pretty big and meaningful for the account that require alts or could require alts. But yeah, just know that for now, this is a uh, it's a small use of alts, but it is a use of alts. So if you're not OK with that, that's completely fine. I think it's OK, but yeah, obviously make that decision at your own discretion. So yeah, that is the plan going into it. Still terrified because I don't know if I could just get tapped by one. But yeah, that is the plan for Garden of Death. And hopefully I don't die doing it because yeah, this is one of the more risky things I'm going to do on this account. First things first, let us get our 50 fire making. So there is 40 wood cutting. 45 wood cutting. Finally done with wood cutting. So there's 30 fire making. 40 fire making. 45 fire making. And level 50 fire making. Beautiful. We are ready for winter sword whenever we choose to go. And went a bit overboard of farming, so we're 29, but it is time to begin the Garden of Death quest. Finally starting the quest. It take so long to get here i had to walk all the way from hasidius but <laughs> yeah we're finally here i'm pretty sure there's nothing that can actually hurt us right up until the final part where you know the lizardmen are there but yeah it should be quite simple until that point just a bit of running around and honestly the quest helper tells you literally everything so that is not an issue either i remember doing this on release and it, it took me about an hour and a half to complete this quest but yeah this is pretty much just a five minute quest now Okay, so that didn't take long at all, but we are finally at the scary part of the quest. So ahead of me, right ahead of me, is three lizardmen. They can each pretty much one hit me, so this is where the ults are going to have to come into play.
Okay. Yes! I'm through! <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I think that was it. That was it, okay, perfect. Is that it? Leave the hole. I don't I don't trust that for a second. Nice. That is done. Oh, that's done. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> yes, now I can do 10 hours of tithe. Okay, now that we're out of danger, we can actually finally finish the quest. So some final words in the stone tablet and there is a garden of death completed. That is 10,000 farming XP and we went a little overkill. So 35 farming and we have just unlocked tithe farm. And here we are, beautiful tithe farm. Hello. This is going to be my home for <laughs> the foreseeable future. And I'm not even going to lie. I usually hate this mini game, but I'm actually so excited. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk Tithe Farm. This is one of the few mini games that Zaya has to offer and it's insanely important because it gives you the opportunity to manually train farming as opposed to waiting for crops to grow. And yeah, that's pretty huge considering my goal is literally getting 82 farming right now. So yeah, so it's definitely a necessity for me on the account. Tithe Farm also offers the farming outfit to increase XP gain, an infinite watering can, a seed box to saw seeds, and a herb box to saw herbs, as well as the best in slot quality of life upgrade, the auto weed perk. So you no longer need to rake your patch when they want it respawn during your herb runs. There's also the opportunity to get seeds and blessings to grow Zamorak grapes for Zamorak wines, but that's a topic I'll discuss later on. So what is Tithe Farm and how does it work? Well, the entire minigame is revolved around growing fruit from the seeds that they supply within the farm and emptying them into sacks. These fruit have three growth stages, each lasting about a minute, and they require watering in every single growth stage or else they die, and this happens a lot when you're not paying attention. Once you've successfully harvested them, you can then deposit them, usually in stacks of 100, into the sack nearby in order to gain a bunch of experience as well as reward points which you can use to purchase all of the rewards that I just mentioned. And this can lead to stacking up hundreds of fruit and just getting a massive XP payload, which is pretty satisfying. <laughs> so Tithe Farm's kind of an interesting one because, you know, for one, nobody really stays here for a long enough time for it to feel like a grind. And two, you'd usually have access to either Staminas or Humidify to refill your watering cans instantly. Yeah, I have neither. Luckily I've got 60 agility already so this grind isn't as annoying in terms of run energy but I'm definitely still going to run out fast which you know alongside the fact that I have to manually refill my watering cans it cuts into my XP rates massively. Usually if you're doing very efficient methods you can expect to maybe deposit about 300 fruit per hour which is a decent amount of XP I think with the highest tier of seeds 74 that's around 100k XP an hour. But for me, I am lucky if I can get half of that, so that is definitely not ideal. If we talk to a farm agricola here and ask to work on his farm, I believe we should actually unlock the minigame teleport for Tithe Farm, so how do I get to that? Does it work? I need to enter the farm, okay. So once we enter the farm, we'll be able to teleport back here using a minigame teleport, which is 20 second cooldown, which is very nice. Alongside this Arceus home teleport, we actually have pretty fast ways to minecarts, and there's one right there, so this is actually perfect for my farm runs, because I can just go straight there to the Hasidus patch, back to here in the minecart, and then I, I'm at the farming guild, so that's perfect. Anyway, give me... Oh, give me a thousand seeds. A little humble start, a thousand seeds, and... I guess let's begin. Yeah, and as you can see, when I fill up these cans slowly, I do have a few tiles marked in tight, to say the least. I'm pretty sure this is the 25 fruit method that I did before, and this is probably the, uh, this looks like 16 actually, which is interesting. But yeah, uh, I will be trying to look at a little optimized version of doing tithe farm for my account where I don't need to use staminas. So these tile markers will most likely change. I'm going to guess it's going to be these ones that change because I do like having these here. But yeah, I guess I will look up a little guide and uh, I'll see you once I begin farming.
Okay, so revised little tithe farmer right here. These tiles, they look quite good. I think it will go well. So yeah, I am at 20 fruits already, so I only need 80 left. I am going to be low intensity. I'm going to be manually walking on these blue tiles, but that's about it. And yeah, hopefully it doesn't take too long. Okay, so this might be a bad idea, but I'm going to test it anyway for the viewers. So, I have 100 fruit here. Normally, I'd put them in the sack, but what if you DC, huh? Or what if you want to log out, log back in, log out? You have 900 seeds, you can get 10,000 max, I'm pretty sure. What if you want to stack up fruits? Well, let me show you what happens when you log out. I hope I save my fruit. If not, then I've just wasted 20 minutes of my life. So, come on, please. Yes. Okay. So... You can stack up fruit now. So I don't know when they changed that or if that was even ever a thing where you lost fruit when you locked out, but that means I can do the one thing I love to do most in RuneScape and that's stack up XP. So you're not actually going to see me deposit anything in that sack yet. I'm going to get 54 in one go. So I'll see you then. 200, 300. Okay, so I've realized now that... uh. Best upgrade I can get is probably the Grickholz can, which is a uh, pretty much an unlimited water can. So what I think I'm going to do is I believe the uh, can needs 200 points to buy. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to stay until 700 fruit, which is the point threshold for the can. Uh, it should get me about 200 points. And then I will have an unlimited water can, so I don't need to refill an entire inventory every two fruit runs I do. So yeah, that will make it a lot nicer. So this first sort of stretch is probably the probably the most difficult or most annoying. So yeah, not the worst grind I've done by a long shot. And to be honest, tithe this way when you're not doing a 25 patch is uh, actually quite chill. So I, I, don't, I don't mind it that much. And it's nice to get the dopamine from stacking up all these fruits. 400, 500, 600, and there's 700 fruit. Time to cash these in. And for some reason, audio didn't record, so here is a nice crisp mic for you in between all of the dodginess. That was my other mics. But yeah, this is definitely the best part of Tithe, just cashing in all these fruits. I'm using the level 34 fruits at the moment, so it's not much XP, but oh my lord, it is so, so satisfying. And that load of 700 gets us all the way to 48 farming. And that actually gave us enough points to get the Agricola's can, which is an infinite watering can, pretty much. It's got a thousand charges, so you only need to fill it up once every few runs. It is... Oh, it made, it made Tithe so, so much easier. I can't even explain. Hello, it's uh, Good Mike Corrid again. Uh, it, I know it's not been a very long time, but hello. I, I'm only here because for some reason I decided on this level 34 fruit grind specifically to just not record audio. Oh well. Ended up getting another 600 fruit and I cashed those all in for more XP. Bought a little bit of the uh, farming outfit there, but that got me all the way to 53 farming. Originally, I was going to go to 54 for the next tier of fruits, but apparently in Hesidius, you can actually go and buy a plus one boost in the uh, pub. So that is what I did and it definitely saved a bunch of time. I think it would have been another 200 fruit otherwise. Okay, so we've got our seeds and the boost appeared to have worked. So I guess let's get started and I mean, let's see how long this takes. Also, this is actually quite interesting, but uh, turns out you don't actually need the farming level to water the plants. So I only needed two silos, which is very nice. One to pick up the seeds and one to plant the plants here. So yeah, I mean, I guess each hundred plants run will, well, it's four rotations, right? So five ciders total. So one to get in, four rotations, and then plus four for each other rotation that you do. But I mean, obviously, I'm pretty much 54, so I won't need to boost from now on. I definitely bought way too many ciders, but I didn't think this is how it was going to work, which is, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. So if you can boost for tithe, please do it, because it is very worth it. I didn't realize this before, else I probably would have boosted from 31, so I could have started this a lot sooner. But I mean... I mean, I say that, but I had the time to go and get 50 fire making in the meantime, so it's not all bad. And it's funny that uh, I'm even considering doing this grind, the uh, 85 grind, or I guess 82, <laughs> because I actually, I, I had a UIM once, right? And I would do tithe 
for my farming XP because I was severely behind on farming XP at one point. And I literally, I swear to God, it was the worst time of my life. I hated it so much. So coming back to it now, without Staminas, without Humidify, without anything, level 60 agility, I had level 99 agility at that point and graceful on my UAM, so it's crazy. I, I'm having like <laughs> such a better time just doing Tithe Farm, which I never thought I'd say. This is actually like... I wouldn't say it's enjoyable, but it's, it's bearable, which is, I guess, all you can really hope for for Tithe Farm. It's, it's great that the, uh, the fact that I'm doing a restricted account has just, like, renewed my motivation to do these really weird, obscure grinds that take so long. I didn't even burn out on doing 60 agility in a course that gives me 7k XP an hour. Like, I, I mean, I, I understand how these crazy chunk locked accounts, these region locked accounts can do such huge grinds because they're actually enjoyable, which is just really strange to say. I'm looking forward to getting a by farming here, which is so weird. So it was around this point that I started to sort of do the 25 fruit method instead of the 20 fruit. So if you don't know, there are kind of two main routes you can go with Tithe Farm. One is 20 fruit, which uses, I think, five patches and 25 uses six. But yeah, the... Uh, the goal is to get to 100 fruit as fast as possible. Obviously, 25 will be four runs, so that's faster than 20, which would be five. But usually, 20 fruit runs require a lot less energy. Like, I tried it before, and I could literally walk between each patch. That's how easy it was. But 25s, you do need to involve a little bit of running. At this point, I was just running and letting my energy reset, which is just so inefficient, and that's probably why the grind took so long. But eventually, I just started walking on the hatches where you'd have to run three squares in between where you're not going to the other side if that makes sense which are the i believe it is the northwest patch and the southeast patch on the actual run so you'll, you'll see me doing that later on but yeah this definitely sped things up a lot and if you manually walk through all of that you can pretty much do it tick perfectly and you will pretty much lose no run energy which is very nice i have marked all these tiles now and if you guys want to try this method if you don't have staminas or whatever like that you can download the tiles I, i'll put them in the description and yeah you can use them for yourself i have marked them so they should be fairly easy to follow the one thing you do have to keep in mind though is that when you are planting your fruit when you click the seed on the patch it is one tick faster to manually press the watering can on the seedling instead of left click watering it and that's pretty much just because it counts as your animation, but that is very, very vital to actually doing the method. Otherwise, your plants will 100% die. And I, I looked away for like one second before my plants would die. That's how tight it is on timing, but it works. So yeah, that's the entire method. That's what I did for pretty much all of the all of the journey. So yeah, I hope that is helpful to you guys. If you ever find yourself in tight part, which <laughs> to be honest, for your sake, I hope you don't. Okay, so we've got 400 fruits. I think that should be about 140 points. So I'm not sure if it can get me the entire gear set, but I'm going to deposit anyway, just to see. 21 gigs B drops. Oh, it's so much dope for me. Look at them. Look at the farming levels. 58. What? Okay, yeah, 140 points. Let us see if we can actually afford... We can at least afford one item, but I'm not sure if we can afford both, so... Boots and legs. Okay, so... 140, yeah, okay, we can... Yeah, let's get the legs. Get the Boro trousers, what the heck? Beautiful. Okay, now more seeds and let's go back in. I've also just noticed that... <laughs> the, the entire sky is like a blood red. I don't know what I've done with my sky box, but it must think I'm in a cave. But the fact it looks literally like hell, I mean, I don't know, it's kind of relevant. So. <laughs> oh, this is quite funny. Uh, if you notice, if you look closely, I keep the watering can effect when I run, so it just looks like I'm pissing. <laughs> oh, I'm going crazy, man. I'm going crazy here. I'm not even... I'm not even 60. What am I doing? And one thing I actually realized I should be doing quite late into, you know, the farming training is that obviously Tithe Farm's an instant, so random events can't actually spawn here. So what I should have been doing was not stacking up fruits as I have been. I should have been leaving every, I believe it takes an hour or so before random events are eligible to spawn when you're logged in. So I should have been leaving every hour waiting to see if a random spawns and if not then i go back in 
And random events actually spawn on a five minute interval if you didn't know that. So if you look at your in-game timer, it's usually a good sort of indicator. So whenever that's it, uh, let's say one hour on the dot or one hour and five minutes, that's when the random is due to spawn. So if you're out of the instance for the one second that it is when it hits the five minute marker, then you will get the random spawn. I actually then downloaded a plugin at the recommendation of my good friends in the Zero Iron Man Discord, a link in the description by the way. But there is a plugin that tells you when a random event is eligible to spawn. It's not super accurate, but it also tracks what randoms you've gotten. So that was very useful because then I didn't have to sort of manually keep track of time. And I believe it is called Random Event Analytics. And you can see the timer down there in the bottom left. It just tells me when I am eligible for a random spawn. Okay, there is the 200 fruit and that should be enough to get us to 64 farming. So let's just deposit this and we can head off to the farming guild. Yes, 64 farming. Ah, beautiful. Okay, we have, uh, how many points do we have? Can we afford anything? Ooh, my favorite. I'm not even going to think. Auto weed. Okay, now all we need is a herb sack and seed box. Yeah, okay, that's literally it. So 500 points, and then we can spend the rest of them on the uh, herb boxes that are uh, on sale there. 30 points each for 10 herbs. It's not the best, but it's all we got, and oh, we will definitely have some excess points. So let's get this minecart directly to the farming guild. Good update, by the way. And yeah, let's uh, see what we can do here. Okay, I've got my ciders. Going to guild Master Jane. Cider up. And do you have any jobs for me? I should be able to ask for medium contracts now. Yes, I can. Okay. What are you going to give me? Quorum. I have that. Beautiful. Okay, so first contract is sorted out. I'm going to pre-plant some things, I think. I won't have everything for contracts, but I do have a bunch of seeds in, uh, in my bank from Master Farmers. So hopefully I'll be able to pre-plant a few contracts and... Maybe I can get some streaks going, but yeah, for now, where is my quorm? Quorm here, and what I do want to do as well is get started on the super compost in this big compost bin here. I think it's actually 30. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll get 30 pineapples anyway. But uh, yeah, okay, let's uh, rake all these, plant them, and uh, it appears I need to boost again to get in. Yeah, uh, once we're done with that, uh, I guess we've set up contracts, which is insanely good for the account okay and we are done we've set up everything all of the patches here are raked those will be raked once i can actually get in without a boost because i don't want to just be kicked out randomly but yeah uh nice i guess yeah contracts online and we just go straight back to tithe farm until our next contract is due or when it's grown and yeah i guess we just come back here once our contract's done and here tithe farm here tithe farm forever and i'm probably not going to record doing contracts because that seems like a very jarring thing to do i'm not, I'm not going to check in with you guys every time i finish a contract just just trust i'm doing them every day but for now it will only be one herb patch and one contract i do i'm not going to plant anything in the patch over there in hasidius because i don't have enough herb seeds so i don't want to waste the ones i do have maybe they're going to be asked for in the contracts i don't know once i get a surplus i'll start doing the double patch run and then we are truly flying but yeah i mean early game secured i guess and coming up should be 65 farming so we don't need a boost to enter the uh medium section of the farming guild anymore which is very nice this is actually the first contract so i know i said i wouldn't show any more contracts but i got the level what more do you want from me okay so this is one of the issues here i've just been given a yew tree contract so i'm gonna ask for something easier this is make or break and this will probably happen a few times if i get a really awful contract then sweet corn okay 200 fruit and 66 farming with that we can buy our second to last item which is the seed box we cannot buy the herb sack right now because i believe it needs some sort of farming or herbal level yeah 58 herbal level but yeah there is the seed box beautiful uams you will know how rough this grind is or how boring it is luckily 
that all happens right as the random event is due to spawn. So hopefully it spawns now and we'll go back in. Three, two, one. Hello, you beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, this is why this is why we force spawn randoms, guys. Beautiful. And a lovely little book for me on Slayer. I believe that's another level. Yep, level 8 Slayer. Nice. 67 farming. I must say the levels slowed down massively at this point because of the contracts, but we keep moving. Come on, come on. Give me a genie. Give me a genie or exam random. Or Forrester. You. Okay, there is 300 fruits in the bag. How many levels does this get us? I'm gonna guess 69. Yep. 69 farming. That is four levels to go until we can actually plant the highest level plant. So I'm gonna spawn my random now and do my contract and then continue. 55 thieving. I started at 52 and that entire time was me trying to get three watermelon seeds for a contract. Yeah, three watermelon seeds and I'm probably gonna get them again in the next contract. Brilliant. So I think I found my new AFK activity, uh, mostly for contracts while I actually wait for them to grow because some, like the watermelon one, I only have the seeds to plant once so I will want to, you know, look over them while I do something else just to make sure they don't die. So yeah, it looks like fishing is going to be that for me in the farming guild because look how close it is. This is actually my best place to fish salmon and trout and it's also the most XP for me so that is perfect. I, I do need a few fishing levels to begin with at the top because you know higher fish from the crates always always welcome so yeah I will be AFKing and there is my first trout after 10 minutes I swear jeez. Yeah I'll be AFKing this while the uh, annoying contracts grow. Very niche AFK method I guess you could say but yeah. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So if you see my fishing level fly up randomly, then that's probably why, because i got some annoying contract that I have to look after. There is 35 fishing. All of that from waiting for some goddamn watermelons to grow. Oh my. And it got to the point in the uh, account where I had done a few contracts, so I had a decent amount of herb seeds, and I could start planting them in the Hesidious patch, so... I was very low level, so I started planting guams. I planted way, way too many of them. I think I planted about 300 guams, which was not ideal. I, I really, really went overkill on that one. But yeah, this is a, another little expedition out of Tide Farm every hour or so that I need to be doing. So the XP rate slowed down even more. Quick bit of efficiency. It's faster to teleport to Tide Farm than walk there. We love to see it. Oh... My can ran out mid-run and I stopped moving because I thought I DC'd. I'm getting chased by the plants. Please. No, I don't think I'm going to make it. No. Please do not, do not die. Oh. Ooh, that was... <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. What? I literally, I, I dug up the the dead plant and I still got a fruit from it. <laughs> oh, that was cutting it a bit close. Cutting it a little bit close. Okay, and with these fruits, it should be 70 farming. So only three levels until I can go to the highest level fruit. So please, I just, I just want to actually get good XP rates. 71 farming. You know we're back at the fishing spot watching over our plants. 40 fishing. And there is actually 43 fishing, which means I can start to do aerial fishing once I get the hunter level. So I'm a little ways off, but I do need to make some money after this grind is done. So yeah, that is definitely going to be a nice little, uh, little side thing I can do if I ever need Hunter XP. Valmore's coming up, so I definitely do. So yeah, it's nice to have at least one of the requirements out of the way. Ooh, the first back-to-back -back contract. This is why I pre-plant my potato cactus. Yes! That's three in a row! Guys, please, please pre-plant your contracts. They're, it is so worth. Okay, and with 
this we should be 73 farming okay nice so that means we can boost up with the ciders to plant logovono fruit which is the uh, final tier of fruit in tithe farm so hopefully the xp increases quite a lot and uh we should be smooth sailing until AE2, so yeah, that is very, very nice. Ah, oh, I, I just can't wait to see a different colour of fruit being planted, to be honest. I've, I've seen that level 50 fruit way too many times. Bit more fishing first. 45. Okay, uh, that's the first inventory of using the boost. I can't afford with this inventory to get another 100 fruit, so I don't think I'll get the level, but let's see how much XP. 35k, that's like nearly double what I was getting before. That's so nice. And there is 74. See you later, Ciders. No need to boost anymore. Those were like half a kilo each, so oh, my run energy is going to be replenishing like mad now. I guess the uh, final stretch begins. Uh, I want to get this done in, let's say, a week, so uh, hopefully I can do that. And I will see you, I guess, here, yeah, 75 or maybe 80. Who, who, who can say? Who can say? So we have gotten to the point where we actually have too many points. We have reached the point cap in Tithe Farm nearly. So I don't want to go over 925, the max is 1000, so what I'm going to be doing is I've pretty much got everything. I do need eventually to save up for grape seeds and Beloka's blessings, which aren't in the shop at the moment, because that's how I can get the most Sami wines in this sort of region. But for now, I don't have a Sami item, which I need for that, so I'm just going to buy all the herb boxes. And we get a nice influx of herbs as well, so Tithe Farm, not too bad. These only give 10 per, so every 100 fruits gives you about 10 herbs. It's not a lot, but it's something, so yeah, that's going to be, I think it's supposed to be around 600 herbs doing my grind, so it shouldn't be that bad, to be honest. So yeah, a nice little bit of passive herb XP I'm getting as well. There should be, I apologize for the noise, 75 farming. Seven levels to go. Another 200 fruit, and that should be 76 and a balloon animal event this is actually one of the events that changed in the random event update recently and i'm fairly sure that this now has a chance to give you an xp lamp but of course i didn't get one 77 farming closing in 78 farming i feel like i'm doing a tag team with the bad mike and me <laughs> okay i think this is actually going to get me an XP lamp because I have all of the set pieces already for the uh, Forester, so... Let's see. I'm not sure if I'm right or not, but I think I am, so... <sighs> yes. Yes. <sighs> oh. Alright, yeah. Do your randoms. Do your randoms. Nine Slayer. 79 farming. And I finally got a Hispori seed. Funnily enough, this came from a contract, it didn't even come from a plant, so this took me actually quite a long time, which I was very surprised about. 80 farming. This is the home stretch. And there should be 81 farming. We can grow dragon fruits and one more level until we are finally out of here. I am very excited to get this done. Oh my lord, I've been here way too long. After this watermelon should be 82 farming. We have finally, finally unlocked the hard tier of the farming guild, obviously with a boost. So let's go and make some garden pies. But yeah, I mean, that is pretty much all of the farming grind that I will need to actively work on already done for the account. So that is absolutely amazing. I can finally plant my palm tree, the thing that will unlock Herblore for me later on. I can start doing hard contracts. I can't, I can't explain how nice this feeling is. Like, I, I despise Tithe Farm now. I, I think I must have spent. And this, this isn't a joke. I know, <laughs> I know Tithe is supposed to be about 100k XP an hour, but including all of the farm runs including the fact that i don't have staminas i'm not doing replant methods and i'm trying to force spawn random events i think this actually took me maybe on the upper end of 70 to 80 hours in game time to actually get this level so this is crazy this is 
well, it's definitely the longest grind I've done so far. It won't be the longest overall in terms of the account because that is actually coming up next. But yeah, I guess in the next episode, we will be sorting out Winter Todd, which is one of the uh, main goals of the series. And one of two that we have remaining after farming's been completed. So yeah, that is brilliant. The uh, spoils of doing tithe. First, I just need to open all of these herb boxes. If I can click. We got about 65 herb boxes. Each has, I think, 10 grimy herbs in it. So a bunch of herbs and Oh god, you can already see them stacking up there. That is a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's move these all into the same tab. And this is the yield from doing 82 farming pretty much at Tithe while keeping up semi-regularly with uh, my farming contract. So that is, I want to say around 800 herbs. So that is a very, very nice start. And I do have a few Tithe points saved over because I do want to be able to make Zami wines if I do get a Zami item, which is a requirement for planting Zamarit grapes. So that is an issue I'll have to overcome later on. But yeah, for now, lovely yield. And we have made a solid dent into starting our dailies for farming. So herb law hopefully will not actually be an issue as long as I can keep this up. So that is absolutely amazing. I think I'll make about 100 or 200 garden pies. So I'm pretty sure it's like tomatoes potatoes and cabbages i want to say to make them so i'm gonna go <laughs> i'm gonna go farm in the fields i don't know where they'll be but I'll, I'll find them i will find them and yeah i'll get back to you once i've got all of the uh, ingredients the cabbage and tomato that you need to make the garden pie you could just buy from a store i'm pretty sure it's one of the ones around here but yeah that shouldn't be an issue but I do need to pick up onions from a bloody field somewhere, so oh, I imagine there's probably one right down there, but oh, that's going to be fun, isn't it? Oh, well. You know what? I'm, I'm going to get this all out of the way. I'm going to get like 250 of them, and then that will 100% be enough, surely. But I think I'm just going to pick these up from this field here and probably just note them as two leprechauns. So yeah, it shouldn't take too long, but... Uh, I guess I'll be back once I have 250 of each of them. Fun. I believe, yep, yeah, cabbage, flour, and tomato. So yeah, I'll be hopping a bunch of worlds to get 250 each of these. And I guess I'll just get the pie dishes from charter ships or something like that. And yeah, then we should be able to make some, some lovely garden pies. So that should be 250 flour, cabbage, and tomato <laughs> so oh my god okay yeah i need two more flour but yeah i'm gonna go get the pie dishes and then i'm gonna make them i'm not gonna record it because that's all just so boring and i guess i'll come back with the yields there should be the 250th pie dish i don't know why i thought charter ship sold them but they don't just this uh vendor in hasidius is the only one who sells them here so yeah, that is uh, all of the supplies done, so now just to fill up some buckets of water and make the pies. That's a lot of resources, actually. I don't know how long this is going to take, but I am already regretting it, so let's just... Oh, let's just do it. Well, that's not good. I'll probably just cook everything I have, because I might as well do it while I'm here, and obviously I'd rather have a higher success rate on the pies, but yeah, this is... There's just always another thing getting in the way. <laughs> It appears I've just hit 500 total. I mean, I went over it by one level, but, you know, I, I didn't notice. <laughs> but, nice. These are... Oh, they're actually going quite a lot faster now that I'm not doing bloody farming or agility. Hopefully we can get... I mean, next up, I guess, is probably a 1,000, which hopefully shouldn't take as long as the uh, initial... I don't have any fish in my inventory! And cooking all the fish that I AFK'd during the farming contracts grind got me to 49 cooking. Hopefully this is enough. As all the garden pies are made, that took way too long, so let's get them cooked. There is all the pies made. We did burn a fair few of them, I can't lie. So we end with, oh, exactly 200 garden pies. So yeah, let's go and finish the episode by planting our famous palm tree. 
Okay, and with this boost from the Garden Pie, we are now 85 farming and we are in the hard section of the farming guild. So we've fully unlocked hard contracts, we've unlocked our fruit tree patch, which is the biggest thing. And we can finally plant the palm tree, which... Ah, oh, this unlocks so much extra Herbler XP, I'm so glad I've done it. And yeah, I mean... Now all that's left is to continue doing our farm runs and move on to ah, move on to the prison. So I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.